as well. Uh, it's wonderful to see you all. Uh, everything that you'll need for our time together today uh, will be on the screen here and uh, it looks like most of the people in the building have found their way to the refreshments at the back so that's wonderful. Um, if you uh, do find yourself fading during the service and need an extra cupcake or something then uh, please just head to the back uh, at any point. That's absolutely fine. Um, today we are thinking uh, about the example of Abraham. As we continue our journey through the season of Lent, we're going to meet Abraham. And uh, he is a real example to us in our faith because he uh, trusted God and he trusted God um, when a lot of the signs around him um, didn't really point to uh, all that God was promising him being uh, just around the corner and on his doorstep. So uh, we're going to be thinking about the story of Abraham and uh, we have got some uh, very special guests with us as well um, that will help us uh, think about that story a bit more. But we are going to begin our time together today with our first song, uh, which is called Great is Thy Faithfulness. So shall we stand and sing this song together and Ian and the band are going to lead us.
Father God, we thank you so much that you are faithful and you can be trusted. And we come to you in prayer today. We thank you that you always are with us and always listen to us. Amen. Let's have a seat, everyone. And as we think about how much God is faithful and how much God can be trusted, um, we just still the sorry bit, sorry. We come to God and we ask for his forgiveness. So we've got some words to share together. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, we thank you so much that when we ask for your forgiveness, you love to give us all uh, that we need and you pour your healing and your life upon us we thank you in Jesus name Amen right I've got um, a question for you how did we tell the time before clocks were invented does anybody have any ideas about that sundial yeah that's a good possibility definitely people would use the sun any other ways? Josh. The moon as well. Okay, sun and the moon. Any other ways? The stars. Okay. I think... Ab okay. What? Let's get a bit more specific. How would you know when it was time to come to church before clocks were invented? The bells. There we go. Okay. So, before we had clocks... People would come to church when they heard the bells because they know they knew that the service was about to begin. And uh, before clocks were invented, uh, when people were living in monasteries and abbeys and places like that, they would mark their days um, and the different services they went to um, by ringing the bells. And that is why... Um, this morning, as you were coming to church, maybe you heard the bells ringing. And it's carrying on that tradition because it's uh, calling people to come and gather together just as we are doing today and worship God. And uh, when we're thinking about trusting God today, uh, we've got some very special guests, as I mentioned. Um, some of the people who actually ring the bells on a Sunday and on different uh, days as well. Um, now, you might not have seen these people before because we generally keep them up the tower. But today, they are down at ground level and they are with us. So I'd love to invite uh, Jeff and Joy and Gerald to come and join me at the front if they could. That would be wonderful. And... Uh, Jeff and Joy and Gerald are here today because, um, if you could go on to the next picture, Cathy, that would be great. Um, today, we are launching a very exciting project to uh, restore and repair the bells of St. James. So, I uh, have invited these three to come and uh, show us a bit more about that. Um, but first, I'll let you introduce yourself. So... Uh, who are you and how long have you been involved with ringing bells at Bulkington? I'll ask that question. Do you want to hold this, Jeff? Just very close to your mouth. Hello, everybody. Can you all hear me? Yeah? Very good. Okay. I'm Jeff Pratt. I've been ringing at Bulkington for many, many years. I came here in 1964. So I've been ringing here 59 years. <coughs> I've also been ringing at other places. I rang the bells in another church for the Queen's coronation nearly 70 years ago. So there we are. I've been ringing for a long, long time. So the project we're talking about today is to lower the bells in the tower from where they are right at the top by the Louvre's and we're going to lower them down into the clock chamber. Thank you, Jeff. That's wonderful. I'll just, just put a little bit more yeah. in there to say the reason we're doing this because the tower rocks. When you sit in the, in the belfry, you sit there and the bells are ringing and it's like, just like sitting on a little train and the bells 
The tower is going like this all the time. I'll bang to pass you back. Right, Gerald, same question to you. Hello, I'm Gerald Trevor. Um, I'm tower captain at Wolvey. I've been ringing since 1982. Um, I come here as a visitor uh, and in fact since Covid um, Wolvie and um, Balkington um, have shared practices um, so that we have enough to ring and, and practice some of the things we want to. Wonderful, thank you. I'm Joy Pluckrose, I've been ringing here for 55 years. Uh, I also ring at the cathedral, I've been ringing at the cathedral for 36 years. Um, so. I think I've done my bit. And a bit later on, I'll tell you how you can help us to lower the tone. Great. Wonderful. Okay. So, uh, as, as Jeff mentioned, we are uh, launching this project today that um, is called Lowering the Tone. And uh, we've got a little uh, video that we are going to play you now um, to tell you a bit more about the project. To have a seat there, folks. Right, I need to, I think, put this microphone on this speaker here. Right. So, hopefully, that one. It's a site that any Bulkington resident will be familiar with. And at St. James, we have a large project on the horizon to upgrade the bells inside the tower. We've called the project Lowering the Tone. And to help you understand a bit more about what the project is and why we are doing this, we're going to take you on a tour inside our iconic 15th century tower. Come on, here we go. Our journey starts with a climb up the spiral staircase. And as we go round to the right, the first room that we come to is the ringing room. And this is where we the ringers do the physical work to make the bells ring out across the village. But more about the ringing in a moment. I want to show you the rest of the tower first, so let's get back on the stairs. And we next come to a rather empty room with ropes passing up through the floor and up into the ceiling. This is the clock chamber. And we can get a really good view at the rear side of the clock face. Long gone are the days of a wind-up clock with weights and gears. It's been electric for many years, including the chiming mechanism. Well, back out onto the stairs, we continue on up, and then we come to another wooden door. Now, this one is a bit more tricky to reach. That wooden door leads to a chamber behind the louvers that you see near the top of the tower. And that's where we are at the moment. And this is the bell chamber. St. James has a ring of eight bells, a full octave, and they're tuned to the key of G. Well, sort of. The tenor, the heaviest bell, is actually out of tune. It's the oldest bell in the tower and is thought to have been cast in the late 1500s. It weighs 1,200 weight, or just over half a ton. That's not far off the weight of a small family car. It is one of two bells in the tower which are over 400 years old. And because of this, they cannot be retuned. So spare a thought each time you hear the clock chime. It's the tenor that does this, and you are hearing an ancient bell. Well, let's continue on up to the top of the tower and eventually we reach a little door and this little door takes us out onto the roof and I can tell you it's a bit of a squeeze to get through but it is totally worth it. The views you get out across the village are quite unique. As you pan around and look over the old vicarage you can just make out Nuneaton Road there in the distance, Barbridge down the side, and of course, some very familiar sights from the centre of the village. When I was learning to ring here as a teenager, I would often climb the tower and I enjoyed looking out over the village. 
I'd try to spot my house. And I would never tire of coming up here because I would always see something new or I'd spot something for the first time. It really is a unique way of looking at the village. And even today, I'm still spotting new things and trying to put things in perspective. It offers you that very alternative view of familiar sites, including the three spires in Coventry. This is all lovely. But the problems occur when we ring the bells. The ancient English art of change ringing requires that the bells ring full circle, starting from the up position. By holding each bell on or just off the balance point, we can vary the time interval between each strike and change the order in which the bells ring. But the tower at Bulkington moves when the bells are rung, and by move, I mean it shakes gently. Anything hanging in the tower is affected by this, whether it's a coat, a spare rope, or even a picture hanging on the wall. It's done this for years. The bells are no exception, meaning that the bells can be thrown on or off the balance. And because of this, they're not easy bells to ring, and the ringers have to work hard to control them. So the solution is to reduce the weight of the bells and hang them lower in the tower. The ancient sixth antenna bells will be preserved in the existing bell chamber and the rest of the bells will be retuned and hung in a new frame in the clock room along with two brand new bells to form a lighter ring of eight. I guess you could say we are quite literally going to lower the tone. Okay, wonderful. Well, if I could um, invite Joy and Gerald um, and Jeff. He was, right, it was, he was only right in front of me. Um, back up. So, we've heard a little bit about this project that wants to um, lower the bells in the tower in order to make them easier to ring and so that the tower doesn't move as much as it does now. Um, but I wonder, uh, maybe, Joy, would you, you mentioned earlier about different ways that we can be involved with the project. So would you like to say a little bit more about that, just to finish us off? Uh, first of all, I'd like you to ask you to pray for us, to pray for this project and to hold us in your prayers. We are taking a leap of faith here. We started this project originally in about 1992, so consequently it's taken us a long time to get here. Now we're here. Please hold us in your prayers and please help us uh, to make this project a success. Second thing I'd like you to do is to spread the word around the village. There can't be one villager who hasn't been affected by the bells or touched by the bells at some stage. If it's heard ringing for services, hundreds of people in this church have had bells at their wedding. Uh, lots of people have heard us ringing for coronations, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh's death, the Queen's death, etc., etc. Uh, and we'd really like the uh, village to, in inverted commas, own this project. You know, we're a church within the community. We'd like the community to come back and actually help us now with that. And of course, you can help us financially. Gerald will tell you a little bit in a minute about the money side of this. But we have got, we have worked really, really hard to make a lot of money for this project already. But we need a top up. There are three ways in which you can help us top up. Um, when the bells are lowered from the tower and come out, they will lie in state along here on pallets, right? The four bells have never been out since 1924. Two of the bells have never been out since 1948. So I think there's very few people in this village who will ever have seen all six bells. Can't imagine anybody actually has been to see all six bells. So they'll lie in state here and there will be, the church will be open and there will be an opportunity to give. When the bells come back with their two new bells, 
uh, which have been donated. Um, they again have to lie in state here. They can't go into the tower until they've been blessed by the vicar. So there'll be another opportunity for the tower to be, for the church to be open. And thirdly then, they will then go up into the tower to be rehung, as Matthew said on the video, but they cannot be rung until the vicar has dedicated them or rededicated them. And we actually have the service sheet from the 1948 service when the six, when the, new, the bells were put up there, the two new war memorial bells were put up there. So we have um, the sheet from there. So it'll be an opportunity again to give. However, meantime, there's a lady at the back who's been ringing here for 50 years, 53 years, I think it is, called Jean Liggin. Stand up, Jean. Jean is very willing to take your money at any time. Checks, buybacks, or whatever stage, you know, Anything you can give us and help us out would be fantastic. Um, there will be um, a memorial plaque of everybody who's donated, who wants their name on that plaque. Um, that will come at the back of the church. If we can get the faculty, uh, will come at the back of the church. Um, so Jean is willing to take your money at any time. Uh, and we are hoping to set up a Just Giving page as well. So please, uh, back us all the way. We've done an awful lot of work on this. So... Please back us. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think we're sure. Thank you, folks. Thank That's you. wonderful. Thank you. Well, so maybe you can see uh, that there is, as Joy said, there's a real step of trust, a leap of faith that uh, lots of people over many, many years have been taking with this project um, and a little later in our service we will see how the example of Abraham uh, can help us as we seek to uh, pray and work towards this project together. Um, we are going to have the next part of our service now which is our Bible reading and Ian is going to read for us and then we're going to go into our next song together. Thank you Ian. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your family and your relatives and go to the land that I will show you. I will bless you and make your descendants into a great nation. You will become famous and be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, but I will put a curse on anyone who puts a curse on you. Everyone on earth will be blessed because of you. Abram was 75 years old when the Lord told him to leave the city of Haran. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Do you have a seat, everyone? All right, well, we're going to go back to uh, Genesis chapter 12 and spend a bit of time with Abraham. So, as we heard in our Bible reading just a few moments ago, God speaks to Abraham and he asks him to leave behind everything that he knows and everything that makes his life secure. Things like his home and his family and the place that he knows and is comfortable in. I wonder if you think about how Abraham might feel being asked to leave everything that he is familiar with behind. What, what do you think that might feel like? Yes, Josh, what do you th- Scared, definitely. I think he probably would have been scared. Yes. Sad? Yeah. Yeah. Would have been confused. Yes. Definitely. There would have been so many different feelings swirling around for Abraham, wouldn't there? And it would be a really confusing, a scary time, a sad time that God was calling him to leave behind so many things. But even in the midst of all of those things, all of those feelings that were swirling around, perhaps what the people around him were saying... Abraham takes that first step. He sets out on that journey uh, with God, even though he doesn't know exactly how long the journey is going to be and what the twists and turns are going to be like on the way. And I think one of the reasons that he does that is that God doesn't just call Abraham to leave things behind. What God wants to do is to lead Abraham into a new future and a new way of life. God says to Abraham, I will give you a a house to live in. I will give you land to live on. I will give you a family to come after you and to be a blessing to those around you. And in the same way, whether, whether we're thinking about what it's like to step out in faith with a big project like we've been talking about today, or whether it's just uh, maybe going to a new school, starting a new job, Stepping into any situation that feels a bit different or unknown or scary or confusing. God sometimes calls us to leave things behind that make us feel safe. But 
God always calls us into life and wholeness and good things that God wants to give us. And you know, there wasn't a moment on Abraham's journey, not one single moment, where God was not with him. In every twist and turn, however confusing and scary and sad Abraham felt, God was always with him. And it was always about what God was doing. Notice what God says to Abraham. He says, I will give you all of these things. I will bless you. I will make it so that you can be a blessing to others. It's not anything that Abraham does. And when we follow God, whether it's uh, on a, a, a big project or something more day to day, it's always about what God gives us. It's not about what we do. And that is why we can trust that God is with us and will be with us every step of the way. A little bit later on, we are going to make some paper aeroplanes. Very often, Chris is happy with that, aren't you, Chris? Very often, when we throw a paper aeroplane, we don't know where it's going to go. It might go a long way, it might go a short way. And actually, that's a little picture for us of God being with us in every step of the journey. And it's also a bit of fun as well. So we're going to do that in a little while. Uh, but first of all, we are going to have a time of prayer together. So let's pray as we sit together. God of Abraham, we thank you that you are God of the past and the present and the future. And we pray that you would be with us on every step of our journey. We thank you so much for everybody who is involved with bell ringing at St. James. Everybody who has worked and given so much in all the generations that bells have been rung here. And we ask your blessing on this exciting project as it goes forward this year. We ask that you would take the little that we can offer and you would turn it into something wonderful that would call generations and generations of people to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of Abraham, we thank you that you bless all the nations through your people. And we pray for your world today. We pray that you would bless especially those parts of the world that are struggling through war or disaster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for all of those whose journey through life feels hard at the moment. We pray that you would send us to those who are struggling and sad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, God, we pray for ourselves. We pray that, like Abraham, you would help us to trust you. We thank you that you are with us every step of the way. Amen. We're going to collect all of our prayers together now. Uh, as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, it's our craft time now. And at the back of church, there is a, a table with some paper on. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some paper aeroplanes. And then what I thought we could do is line up a, along this step and see which one goes the furthest. Um, I think if you want some tips on a really good design for a paper aeroplane, maybe uh, Chris Worley might know a thing or two about it. Um, so let's head to the back. There's going to be some music playing while we do this. 
And if you would like um, some more refreshments, there might be one or two cakes that need finishing. Uh, so please help yourselves, and I'll gather us back together when we've got our planes.
Okay, we are going to have our final song for today now, and uh, there are some actions for this. So I will, I will attempt to do some actions at the front, and if you would like to do them as well, you're very welcome to. Let's stand and sing together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you his peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much everybody for being here today. Thank you so much uh, to the bell ringers for coming along and sharing with us. And keep an eye out on the website and on the Facebook page uh, for more ways to get involved with the project as it goes along. Uh, two things to say. The first thing is that our next Cafe Church service will be on Sunday, the 2nd of April. Um, we are actually going to meet at half past nine down at St. James School uh, because it's Palm Sunday. Uh, so we're going to meet down there for a procession up here, but we'll be here at 10 o'clock. If you don't make it for half nine, you'll still be able to come here. Basically, just wherever you see us, join in. Uh, the other thing is... There are some postcards at the back of church that look like this. Um, and they've got all the Easter services on. So if you'd like to take one of those or take a few uh, to give to people that you know, uh, then they're at the back of church. Have a wonderful week, everybody. God bless you and see you very soon. Oh, uh, there are also uh, Easter raffle tickets available. If you're interested in those, see Penny and she will explain everything. <laughs>